Jim, they will ask you to come forward and swear in our new board members, Jennifer Corrigan and Tori Cleland. Good. Jennifer and Tori, would you please stand? Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Tori. I, Jennifer Corrigan. Do you solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office? Do you solemnly swear that I will execute the office? Faithfully execute faithfully. the office. <laughs> <laughs> Duty like and the trust of school trustee. Duty and... Trust. I was not listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she thought I was going to remember and say it I know. Duty or the trust of school trustee. Duty or the trust of school trustee. For the Winooski School District. For the Winooski school, school District. And that I will therein do equal right. And I will therein do equal right. And justice to all people. And justice to all people. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment. And ability. And ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. I also solemnly swear. I also solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont. I will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont. And the United States. And the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. If you will sign each of these. I will record them as a picture. Welcome aboard. Yay! Again. Again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we will have the reorganization of the board, and the first order of business is the election of the board president. Do I have a nomination for board president? I nominate Mike DeCaro. Do I have a second? A second. Are there any other nominations? I nominate Jay Lambert. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, so we have a nomination for Mike DeCaro. And we have a nomination for Jay Lambert. All those in favor of Mike DeCaro as president, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. All of those in favor for Jay Lambert as president, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Okay. Nay. Okay. So Mike DeCaro is the board president. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Okay, the next officer is the election of the secretary. Do I have a nomination for board secretary? I would nominate Jay Lambert, secretary. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any other nominations for board secretary? All those in favor of Jay Lambert as board secretary, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Jay will be the board secretary. Congratulations, Jay. Um, and the next order of business is the committee assignments. We have the superintendent search committee. Currently, we have Mike DeCaro and Jay Lambert serving on that committee. <coughs> Are there any um, nominations <coughs> to change that, or would people like to keep Mike and Jay on that committee? So I think a motion would just to either keep it or, and then if that fails. Yeah. So a motion to keep Mike and Jay on the superintendent search committee. Do I have a motion? Can I just interrupt for one little second? Because I'm noticing just we only have three um, committees, and I'm noticing that Jay, you're on each on all three of them and we have more committees as well and, and we need to talk okay. about that too with so I just want to let me just finish my thinking so sure. I just wanted to make sure because you know, we're going to we're going to be going through them one on one you know one two three um, if if we feel like we need more different you know different representation since we do have one board member sitting on all three of them I don't know how to do that if we're just going to go through them and agree 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 mm -hmm. agree so I just want to put that on the <clears> table and and uh, as a segue to that um, and I, not that it's because I don't think you're doing I, a great job, but no, I'm just I, noticing that I it's feel consistent. there are three more committees that we haven't that aren't on here. Um, no, one. Uh, Nellie May is yep. one of them. 
packs if we still want to continue that. Well, I think that that kind of comes down to when we were talking about last board meeting about what's a board committee and right. what's not a board committee. Uh -huh. So right. my packs. assumption, since these are on here as board committees, these are the three that are defined as a board committee. Right, because there's a specific purpose and they don't last. That these aren't going to last. Right. Okay. These have a specific purpose. <clears throat> Beginning and ending. I'd, I'd love, because I would love right. clarity on what is a board committee and what are we just like. And what about negotiations? Doing. That's right. also I think, a board yeah. committee. I think, so I think the superintendent search, I mean, you folks hire the superintendent. Right. So that's right. obviously your, right. that's your role. Um, consolidation committee, that's, I guess, is the um, state, like, Red or State that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mandated, um, and I guess that would be also your committee. Yeah, right. uh, facilities. That's a means. Yeah, that's yeah. really. I mean, that would really yeah. be something that that's, that's up to your thought. That, that should right. be. Yeah. We should do away with that as a board. Right. Yes, yeah. as a board. <clears throat> as a board appointed right. thing. Right. Not to yeah. say that she might not want to have one of you on it. Exactly. Right. Right. Which just one? The consolidation. The facilities. 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 Yeah. That would be really your yeah. committee. I think when you carry it to the next ones, I think Nellie May was requested and I think almost required to have at least a board member on that to, to do that one. So whether that's a board committee or it's a request from the Nellie right. May, right? It's, it's, so. It was a requirement of the <coughs> Nellie May Partnership for Change. Yeah. Right. So, but that I think should be here for us to decide on, on here while we're all Because we together. did nominate Amy. Mm -hmm. Right, it was. Right. It went through mm -hmm. all of us to agree who was going to represent us mm -hmm. on that board. So we can add those. Yeah, committees. so I think so that, that one anyway. And, and negotiations. And, and negotiations. I think that's. I think a key that, one. Yeah, too. that's. I, mean, I think you keep negotiations in your policies, so uh, mm -hmm. that would be your committee. Right. And responding to you, Tori, <coughs> I would be more than happy to to give up negotiations to someone else. Because quite frankly, folks, my plate is pretty full. Really? I, I think the other two, the, sides. the other two, I, I have some some expertise, yeah. and I, you know what I mean. I think I think the search the search committee is going to be of such short duration. Mm -hmm. yeah, search committee sh it's should be done here very right, very, very near term. So that won't that won't take up a lot more of your time. Right. Tonight. So okay. So what we'll do then is uh, the search. Did, we didn't even get to that one, right? We, no, because I think we okay. still haven't okay. really listed like what are all the board committees. So but I think it really comes down them. to the superintendent search, which has a very limited life. The Nellie May we want to appoint, not that that's necessarily a board committee here, but it's a request from right. the Nellie May. Right. And the negotiation. And, and the consolidation. And negotiations. So then so PACs, those like the, family, um, family groups and implementation teams of uh, partnership for change are just our interest of whether we're joining them or not so it As doesn't a community okay because that was member. a different conversation that we had when we switched me from the superintendent committee that was one of the reasons so I just want to again just be really clear about what's a board committee and what's not well so PAX, we PAX originally was required under the SIG Mm -hmm. That has a very limited lifespan left to it as well. Although that committee should continue, again, it's a it's means, means that it's means, so it's not should right. handle. Okay, so that's yeah. good to know. So the so the the ones that we have that are just board committees are super superintendent search, consolidation study, negotiations. Yes, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. So those three. Okay. Uh, consolidation, super superintendent consolidation, and negotiations. And an LMA, right? Are we going to call an LMA a board committee? I I, I don't know that gonna it's going to be. Not no, because okay. it's um it's just what they're trying to do is just have stakeholders. It wasn't a committee right. that this board right. developed and that okay. has this charge from this board. But it's a membership from the board that should be decided here. Yeah, I think that yeah. would be the that yeah. would be the the place to do it. Okay. Okay. And so any other committee we decide to join on our own is up to us. And we don't need to come for board approval to join a committee as a as a like community on as a community as a member or right, or as a, a community member okay or yep. a parent okay yeah. right. that's a lot of clarity thank and you so for that. The, the the key there is making sure that it doesn't get assumed or taken for 
fact that you are there as a board as member. As a board member, okay. That's, and and I it's, think always, it's always, I found it's always helpful. A lot of these these um, things, when they, when they happen, mm -hmm. people will go on around and introduce mm -hmm. themselves. You introduce yourself as your role. I'm Jay Lambert, I'm here as a parent or whatever and that's that helps clarify things of things that you do right up front doing, right up front right. Yeah. Yeah. that's a good idea yeah thanks okay. for the clarity. and and that makes sense in this grand scheme of the whole policy governance end okay so if good. we're going to go through and okay. look at the committee so we we can start with the superintendent search committee yep. and, and mike and jay you're currently serving on that Right. So, I so think the, it, because you said it's short-lived, it would make sense that you just wrap it up. Yeah, I think the motion would be to continue, yeah. and then if mm -hmm. we pass, continue with the current yeah. two. Then. So, do I have a motion to continue with Jay and Mike serving on the superintendent search committee? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, Sandy, did you get that, Jay and Mike? Mm -hmm. Um. The next committee is the Consolidation Study Committee, and that committee uh, will be in effect this year and probably next year. This year we have Jay and Tori. We've only had one meeting. We just met last, last week. So do I have a motion to continue with Jay and Tori? for the consolidation search or the consolidation committee. can we start at just a slightly different point and ask if either one has any concerns about continuing just to if you guys are you, are you guys both good with moving I'm that forward? okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so now totally. we, yeah we can start there okay and make so sure we're second good. i'll second okay. all those in favor Aye. Okay. okay so jay and tori and then the next committee is negotiations um, that committee has been meeting this year. Jay and Jen are on that committee, and we will be meeting into April right now. That's as far as we've scheduled time. This committee could go beyond this school year. We don't know. So Jay and Jen, Jay, you said that this was I'm, something that you no I'm, longer want it to I continue mean, I'm with. Willing to there's been concern expressed from another board member and I'm willing to to give some of it up and, and you know I, I negotiations is something where number one I think it's it's important that everybody get their feet wet in it as board members and the truth is in the fall guys we're, we're most probably going to be in negotiations with the support staff as well they'll be coming to us and asking to negotiate here in the next few months, I would think, because their contract's up next year, right? Mm -hmm. So we should be hearing from them. Yeah. So as far as negotiations goes, everybody should be able to get their feet wet in this, and we should look and see who's not on committees and and or who is, and and spread the work out a little bit. I guess that's yeah. how I feel. And once the super can, the super search is done, I'm pretty much committee free at that point. So I wouldn't mind doing the negotiations if that's mm -hmm. the will. Okay, so um, Jen, you're, you're continuing? Okay, so do I have a motion for Jen continuing and Mike, meaning you're going to step in for the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Providing them in the state. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. And do we want for that particular committee, because it's kind of important, do we want a backup person for that? I think we have to. Do you want to be the backup? I mean, so I would be the backup. That way, since you're already sort of in the know. I was a backup last year, didn't get right. used at all, but had at least a fundamental understanding of where things were going. So I think that's a good idea to have yeah. uh, somebody that knows they're going to be in the pit if they need to. Right. Okay. So, to speak. so Jen and Mike will be on negotiations. Jay will be the backup. So do I have a motion for those three people to be on negotiations? So moved. Second. No second? Oh man, I don't know that I can second. So. Can we second? No? no? Sure you can. Okay, well, I'll second then. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Opposed? Yeah. Amy, did you say anything? Nay. Okay. 
All right. I would, I would, excuse me, I'm sorry. I would just say that Amy probably should be the batter up for the fall for negotiations, I would think. Because she had, really hasn't had a hand in it. And when that when that comes when when they when they offer I would ask that the board just kind of keep that in mind so everybody do we re-establish that so uh, there'll be a time on, on the, the board separate, agenda it's a separate yeah that, okay. that's not okay, something perfect. we're going to do Excellent. tonight so come you have to so wait come yeah up. you have okay. to wait till the so union so at that perfect. point you just do that it again way we're inclusive everybody takes a hand right. at it works okay um, so the last committee was. I, I don't have no, it written down Nellie in front May. of me, so I would say the Nellie May is the last okay. One the Nell, the That's Nellie the only May, the one we haven't touched that we discussed. Right? So um, the Nellie May, the person from the board that serves on the Partnership for Change Steering Committee, it involves a lot of time, so that people know that up front. Um, currently, Amy has been serving on that committee. She's also part of the executive committee, which is a branch of the steering committee. It's a I'm smaller no. group oh. of the steering okay. committee that's doing some of our work and then brings it back to the larger steering committee for all of us to vote on. So um, it, it's time intensive, so people should know that going into it. Um, and if people are not attending the steering committee may ask that you step down um, so you really have to commit if you're you know if you're interested in that you need to put in the time so Amy has been serving for the last year um, do I have a Is nomination the, just to, to start a slightly different point are the two too much no um, you can't well a you can't serve on the executive committee without serving on the steering committee Okay. And okay. So I didn't the realize executive they committee were tied. is by invitation only. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I move that Amy continue in that role. Okay. I would second that. Okay. Do we need to have a discussion about a backup there too, from a time perspective? Would that be worthwhile? They don't want. We've yeah, had that discussion, and they don't want a backup. Right. They don't. Okay. <laughs> they don't want. Yeah. They don't want people in and out. They're just looking for consistency. Mm -hmm. and so. On a side note, we're um, needing to replace. A uh, Winooski member who has um, stepped down. Well, a community, community member. A community member. Yeah. And um, we haven't done that yet because there's no process in place as to how to do that. Yeah, we definitely. Right, need to have yeah, right now it's just that. word of mouth. If people know of anyone, you can invite them to contact Lindsay. Um, and I think we've given her some names and we she's have. reached out to people to see if they would be willing to jump in. How long ago? Um, it was a few weeks ago. And any bites? Or do we still need? Um, at the last executive push? committee meeting, um, they were trying to decide a process as to how to replace that person. Overall, from, Over, from the partnership from perspective, the not, the partnership our, not from the perspective. Town. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they've honestly. The last week they've been involved with director interviews, which has right. really yes. taken most of their time. Okay. So, okay. <clears throat> so, so we uh, a motion in a second. We did have a motion from Jay, and you made the second. Okay. All those in favor of Amy continuing with the Partnership for Change Steering Committee and Executive Committee. Uh, okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Those opposed? All right. So, Mike. I'm going to turn the agenda back to yeah, you. Yeah, so and, just to touch on I just, e uh, I just yeah. want to remind people that we do have Joe Gamash coming at 8 o'clock for an executive session. So if we can um, stay within the time parameters here, he would appreciate that as um, I think we're going to need over an hour for our executive session. Okay. That was planning an hour and a half, so. Yeah. Okay. So that's good news. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so the only other item, though, Mary, that up in, in section two was the board of Eth the code of ethics. The the <clears throat> printout that we got wasn't the one that we've had. So I just asked uh, Mary to go back and just review the two. The one that uh, Sandy had pulled out as a single page. Right seems like it cover. It seems like it covers everything, but I didn't get a chance to check the two side by side. So. I would like to defer the code of conduct signatures and concurrence until 
April, if nobody has any concerns about that, just so we at least, and again, if the single page works, um, I'm all for uh, condensation of what we've got going here, so. Okay, um, agenda revision and time allocation. Um, we have, uh, like to add to the executive session, um, uh, a negotiations update. We'll pop that in. Um, and then also there's another item I'd like to discuss in the executive session uh, with regard to one of the warrants that we've had in the recent past. So we'll discuss that. Uh, we'll discuss that there. We'll add those two items. They should be relatively quick, but we'll work around Joe's schedule when he gets here. Any other agenda revision, time allocation, discussions, thoughts? needs okay uh, the uh, consent agenda I didn't did I see a consent I agenda yeah. file it's I didn't have end. one it's, right at, it's the at the end of your agenda keep scrolling down oh at the end of the agenda the approval bill is ah, in okay. The okay snuck it in on me um, Mike? Yeah. Um, under the time allocations, can we back up for just a yep. second? Yep. Can we add a uh, personnel matter under executive session, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we'll add uh, teacher negotiation. Look at those board policies. We're just having noise. <coughs> and uh, okay. Uh, any um, items on the consent agenda? Um, Mary, I just had a question. Um, policy 1330 use of facilities and this struck me at our annual meeting yeah, okay. on in our annual meeting is there is a um, there is an item on the agenda that's approved from the floor that the public approves the public using our facilities according to board policy and yet we're eliminating board policy 1330 mm -hmm. should that policy exist and I would say if it is to exist, then basically all it would say is this would be handled out of the superintendent's office because it is a means. But how does the law play into that? Is that policy required to be a board policy because of how it was voted from the floor? You know what I'm talking about, right? So you're asking as far as the required policies? Right. It says per board policy. And I, and I guess my question is, should there be, quote, a policy? It's a means. So I would think in that policy, it would basically just say the superintendent's going to handle this. But should there be a policy because that's the way it was approved from the floor? It says per board policies. The public show well, and we all vote on it right <laughs> right so i guess my question well is, how do you how do you guys handle that now what did, let me ask a, a slightly different question yeah. before you answer yours why would we put specifically that piece in that town I meeting i think section? it's required by law I believe that's what George said. And that's what George said is I believe it's required but, there, by but law. But it's not listed, right? But it's not areas. listed as a required policy under the VSBA website where they list all of the state and federal mandated policies. It doesn't show up as a required. They don't necessarily catch them all, FYI. And I found that in the past. <coughs> no offense to our wonderful <coughs> friends at the VSBA. Well, so I guess I'm just asking as a legal question. Yeah. We're voting on it from the floor. We're approving that. It says specifically it's a board policy. Should it be a policy or should it not? I just want clarification tonight because we're fixing to get rid of this thing. And I, I don't know the answer to that. So, so I would ask that we temporarily take that out 
of this part of the consent agenda and keep it and oh. until we find out the answer to that question. What was the number on it? 13. Just call it one of the state or federal or whatever required policies. Mm -hmm. And you know what? George Mary would probably be the person to ask because I believe he's the one that said during the meeting that this is required by law. I think I'll get a legal opinion. Yep. Um, yeah, we can do that as well. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing. That's fair, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't. Ha I don't think we have one. You have a list of our policies there. I don't think there's one on it, but we may not. <laughs> it may in fact be required. We just don't have it. Any other, um, any other, um, do we have a resignation letter for, um, K Current the alchemy. There you go. I let you struggle long enough. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> Thanks. Should have been an eighth of a second. I'd have butchered it. Um, I guess is that something that we need in here would normally have or need? No, we have resignation letter or they just he did him. submit a resignation letter. I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, Cara, he did submit a resignation letter. Is it in the backup materials? Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's in email format. In another in another communication other than the original no that's that's how he submitted it in email format and it would be under um the um number four oh. consent agenda it should be in there i don't have it Sounds like it was the intent to uh, have it in, but I didn't have it in either. So if we could amend the, actually, it shouldn't be an issue just to have it in April, correct? Based on timing and everything. So if we could get that onto the consent in April, we'll close it that way. Okay. You know what else is missing is the minute meeting. The meeting minutes. For February 13th and March 3rd. Oh, right. Yep, yeah, you are correct. Then, uh, the header, the minutes, header is there, but the meeting February minutes weren't attached. February 13th and March 3rd, in March 3rd minutes, are on this either. Aren't what? Aren't on, we don't have them. I'm kidding. No. Mm -hmm. the, the header is there. You put the header in, but didn't apparently attach mm -hmm. the minutes inside underneath. Not in the one we've got anyway. I can't approve that either. It's okay, Sandy, you were sick. <laughs> <laughs> I felt great that day, I thought. <laughs> well, you're, you're off the day before, so it's okay. Yeah. I did have the letter. Okay. Um. The rest of this is going to go smooth. <laughs> right, gotta be an optimist. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know this right. I didn't want uh, to look at Okay, let's see if we can uh, make a motion to steer what we have from here. Uh, I would, uh, on the consent agenda, I would accept the motion to approve the consent agenda with the following. Uh, the following um, disclaimers, if you will. Policy 1330 will remain on the books until we get legal clarification on whether we need it based on our town meeting in the, in the spring requiring public uh, 
authorization of the use based on board policy. If we don't have one, that'll leave a hole. Uh, also striking the meeting minutes that are not in here from February 13th and March 3rd. Uh, and uh, though it is not in here, we will <coughs> look for the resignation letter, letter of CARA in April. I would accept that motion. So moved. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consent agenda moved. to the admin reports any any um, comments I just had one okay. uh, question or comment for you Mary on the superintendent's report you were talking about I believe it was on yours teacher evaluation mm -hmm. um, you're doing some changes we submitted a waiver sometime back about productive competence standards whatever happened with that we are you talking about us as a district mm -hmm. well we as part of the school improvement grant we were told we had to use a research-based model which we are using Danielson okay. and that's what we've been using the teachers were trained in it the administrators <coughs> this is a second piece that we're adding we're not switching we're adding another layer with the walkthrough observation and we're going to be training on that and basically what it is is working um, using skillful teacher and really looking at how do you go in and do a walkthrough and collect the evidence that ties into the rubric and then there's a whole reflective piece for the teacher so John Barone is going to be working with us he's working with other schools in the state to do that training and then next year we will fully implement it. James is going to be part of the training so that the teachers understand it as union leadership. And we've got um, Mary's two coaches that are also going to be trained in it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mary, I had one request on the um, kneecap scores. If you could put the state in there, it's good to compare you to yourself. But if you don't know where you are in space, other than that, it would be uh, mm -hmm. gives uh, kind of a benchmark or at least a minimal goal in some of them. In some of them, I didn't I didn't see it in in all. But at the grade level, I, that's where I need to try to get at. It. I can get at it from because they reported out as a three eight and that if they if I can get it at each grade level they don't always break it down that way that's why it wasn't there I couldn't find it readily okay all right if you can find it it'd be good to add for yeah. just no because I'd like to see too okay anything what else what I was finding it seemed to be the state overall create so everything looked the same but I'll I'll look and then okay. I'll add it in just for again yeah uh, a stake or a benchmark all right, anything else on the admin reports? Okay. Um, we need to officially accept those or just move through? Just move through, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, focus on learning uh, this time based on the total overall agenda. We'll roll. Uh, public comments, general public. WEA, James? Yeah, I actually have some comments. All right. Hey. Welcome. Uh, first thing I wanted to um, thank James and the board uh, for the negotiations. Having um, the tenor has been very positive, and our uh, negotiators really appreciate that. And wanted to thank you. And uh, we're feeling that uh, things are moving forward, and we're negotiating and talking, and, and that's good. So thank you. Uh, the second thing I want to uh, talk about, uh, I want to thank Jen and Mary for cooperating and working with us uh, with the partnership with Adam Urbanski and that was really positive last night and Adam did a wonderful job down at the State House today and um, we actually have some things smoothed out with the Vermont NEA and Adam too which had been a kind of a friction point um, 
after that we had a meeting. So that's really positive, and I think the partnership was is very pleased with the work that Winooski's been doing um, in uh, labor relations. So um, that's a good thing. And, uh, and just James, just for clarification, yeah. the Adam Romanski piece is a is a uh, piece on collaborative bargaining, which is slightly different than the current form of collective bargaining. So. Uh, it, exactly. no, it's, just for it's, the it's so. collective bargaining, but it's it's actually um, it's benchmark-based bargaining where you're not really negotiating over uh, money. You are negotiating based on certain agreed-upon norms or benchmarks, and um, it takes a lot of the conflict out of it. Be, uh, it. It actually goes beyond. I mean, it's it's pretty complicated and. But it, it goes beyond the just having uh, rules in place for uh, ground rules. Uh, it's actually having agreed upon uh, goals that uh, both sides work towards. And obviously, this is something that we're working on, and, and it's not in place right now. But uh, it can take a lot of the rancor out because things are agreed upon. And also, it takes out the fact where you have a, a, a board that changes or a superintendent that changes because there's principles that um, labor and management have agreed on up front, and you write that into the co the principles into the contract, um, and uh, it it just builds. Research says that it obviously builds better uh, relationships between management and labor, but it also uh, has an effect, uh, research based effect on student learning because it's just a happier workplace and um, there's just less rancor. I mean, in a nutshell. Thank you. That's it. And, and the third thing I want to talk about, uh, somebody brought it to my attention that uh, we haven't had a lot of grievances uh, over the past couple of years. So, and I went back and checked and we actually haven't had any over the past two years. And uh, I wanted to thank the administrators uh, here for working with us. Every problems have come up, but we've always sat down and worked through them um, without going through that process formally. So we've had issues that have come up. We've had to work through them, but it has never gone to a formal grievance being filed, um, which is is really good and, and uh, it really makes life a lot more peaceful and and um, cooperative. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Student Council Rep, uh, not, uh, not present. So I, I apologize, yeah. Mike, but there was one other thing on the administrative reports I just wanted to call attention to, okay. um, if I could. Um, if you'll notice in Rebecca's reports, the parent groups are going to have to get their own insurance. Yes, thank um, you. And as it's looking now, um, <coughs> both groups are most probably the two main groups, PTO and the boosters. Um, I believe have both gotten their EIN numbers. They've had the kickoff. We're both most probably going to have to be 501c3s, um, which will um, to accept donations, which will probably cost the groups about $400 a piece to do that. Is that a one-time charge? Year, right? That's that's a one-time charge. Okay. That part, and then we're probably going to end up having to pick up insurance. So to get this whole thing started, it's probably going to cost the groups anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars. Can I just say something? Sure. Um, in speaking with Donna, maybe it's not expressed clearly in here, but it says this: um, the groups can be covered under our policy if the school or the school management is in agreement with the activity. You'd be covered by our insurance. So I don't know that there'd be that many activities that those groups would do that. The management would be unwilling to support like right. the craft fair, the fun fair, the, the, fair. I mean, the if dances. They want to do underwater basket weaving and diving or something, we might think. But I think any of the activities that you currently do, the management supports yeah. it and be covered under our policies the way I interpret it and the way it was explained to me. So maybe we need some, we need some more clarification. But. Well, and that's, I guess that's fine with insurance being that, again, that's a means, I guess, but we're going to be looking to you, Mary, to and, and the admin to figure out exactly how this is, what this is going to look like um, as far as individually for, for our activities. So, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks.
so <clears throat> ongoing business um, policy governance education exercise. We had a uh, an assignment with our rehearsal 5.1. Yeah. And Ange has. Do you have copies of that? Yeah. I've got it. Let's see. How are we given the answer? Was the answer <laughs> no. okay. This is the one we were given. Where's the answer sheet? Of course, the answer Correct. sheet. I don't we, did, we did one out of the two. I actually <laughs> have it. I actually have it at home in the back of the book. But I didn't use it. <laughs> and it's on the CD. <laughs> the single sheet, two sided. So let me just review what these um, this worksheet is or this um, rehearsal is on. Uh, it's coming around. What there is is there an issue of a board issue has come up and um, gives an example of how to go through the process of uh, dealing with that issue or concern. Um, as a four-step process, one is to look at uh, what policies are relevant to this issue. Uh, number two is, according to the, the board's policies, um, is, this, is this a board uh, work or is this the, the superintendent's work? This, it's, it uses CEO in here, but that's what it means. Um, and then what action, if any, should the board or the board member take? And then finally, if the action you propose involves a possible uh, board policy change, what do you do? So um, this one is, um, has to do with ends. And I know you folks don't really have, you have pretty generic ends, but um, at some point you'll have a more detailed ends. And this is a situation where one of the board members uh, feels that the ENDS policies, as written, are not sufficiently defined. And this particular board member is not willing to accept the full range of reasonable interpretations. And the question is, what should she do? So the first step would be to look at which policies uh, are relevant policies. So I, I think we can do what we did last time and take a few minutes to to kind of look through the policies, um, the four different groups, and then come up with ones you feel are relevant. Do you want to spend more time or do you want to mm -hmm. just get into it? I think we can <coughs> get started. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we can eliminate ENDS policies since that's, since that's what mm -hmm. your issue is. Um, any executive limitations that uh, you think might be relevant? 
I didn't uh, I didn't really see anything in executive limitations mm -hmm. to specific to the to this one. There were a couple of other cases, and maybe I'm, I missed something in there, right. but I didn't see anything I, that pertains specifically. I did see. I wasn't. I'm not sure about this, but I think that the constraint is probably what you can't do. Also, all aspects of our districts are defined. I guess um, in thinking about it, that with the global executive constraint, you know, you're kind of writing, you shall not cause something. So it's really broad because it sounded like this person had a concern about not really to accept the full range of reasonable interpretations. Right. When I felt like that first global con executive constraint policy sort of you know clearly define what can't happen in a broad sense okay. so yeah i saw a little connection there yeah nothing too specific but at least they couldn't do anything unlawful unsafe imprudent and in violation of commonly accepted educational professional ethics and practices which is mm -hmm. doesn't leave you a lot of room <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. she, she, the, the superintendent can't do anything too outrageous mm -hmm. yeah uh, okay, what about board management delegation? <clears throat> so I had a couple in there. Mm -hmm. um, one was 333. Three, three. Yep. Um, you know, reasonable interpretation by the superintendent, and they, author they're, they are authorized to establish all procedures based on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the one right after that is, uh, mm -hmm. says when delegation is in place, board will respect and support the superintendent choices, or in this case, CEO choices. So. The policies have been put in place. I'm assuming the interpretations have started to come in. Mm -hmm. In this case, it sounds like one board member doesn't say how many there might be, has a concern about that. Right. But the way they are laid out or previously agreed to, they are what they are. Right. This and gives, this says, as long as it's a reasonable interpretation, it's, it's, a reasonable, it's okay. The reasonable right. person, not right, not whether that person judges them to be reasonable, but whether a reasonable person would judge them Correct. to be reasonable, which is a big difference. And then four says, if you don't like, if, if the board is not comfortable with that, they have the, the responsibility to change it in some way. Right. Okay. Yeah. I have else? the same ones, but also with four, that if something comes up. Um, you can shift the boundaries right. between the board. So there's always the place when something specific comes up. So that's just being like, I'm not comfortable, like something really specific. Right, go we dig have, down a little deeper into whatever issue Right, is, right, right, exactly, to clarify. Now, our, our ends policy placeholder is what we're talking about when we're saying the ends are too broadly stated. Is that correct? Well, mm -hmm. in, in, well, which, this scenario, the sample. This scenario. Yeah, yes. sample. Yeah, sample. You don't really know what the ends policies are, but there's one listed. Down one below. sample, yeah. Because I kind of went the other way on the ends policy placeholder. I didn't think it was broadly stated enough. All right. Well, that would you know I don't know what this board, right, this arts board, uh, ends look like. Um. The other section, I think the following section on monitoring superintendent's performance, I guess, is another area that um, would have some relevance. Yeah, the the well, 3143, oh, you did the reasonable person's test. Yeah. 3144. Yeah. Um, but I think, though, Ange, if you, if you go to the superintendent evaluation piece, mm -hmm. You're making the assumption that the one board member is speaking for the board. I read this that that one board yeah. member was the only one out of yeah. five, six, ten that had an issue with the way the ends policies were written. Right. So I was on a little bit different path. Okay. It wasn't the entire board, and it wasn't necessarily something that was a crisis in this particular case. It's, it's hard to tell, but that one person had the issue. It doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't as stated pass the reasonable person test right so right. It, it could be a, an evaluation right. it, piece, i mean it could reach this point but it may not right i also found that in thinking about it that if, if someone's feeling uncomfortable about the broadness of it like reading through the policies and 
helps you sort of realize that there's um, checks and balances within that. Mm -hmm. You know, like being able to read that there are, it is about the reasonable person uh, test and that we do have um, the ability. So I, I guess I was also approaching it as if you're feeling uncomfortable about the broadness of it, diving into the policies and then checking yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some, there's some clear benchmarks sort of showing you how it, it, um, it gets caught. Like there's a net. Right. right. Um, all right, what about on the governance process? You know, the four point items. Yeah, Anything there that's relevant? I had um, 413 on that one, which um, <clears throat> which was, uh, and I just, the, the statement that I pulled out of that was the, uh, the board can change the policies at any time, but once they're in place, we'll scrupulously observe them mm -hmm. as they're in force. Right. Um, so mm -hmm. that. You know, if there is a problem, you are not necessary. It's not all all the time, all being, and never to be changed. If it is wrong, or if it needs to be adjusted, it can be. Right. But when it is in place, it is what you have in force, and you, we will uphold that as a board. <coughs> and I think I'm higher up in that uh, 4.1e where it's the, the collective rather than the individual. I think that's what mm -hmm. somebody was saying before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right, and that kept coming back to me reading. Reading the question itself was, is this just one person that mm -hmm. has, uh, and, and I can foresee us going through that as we move through time and get established to having somebody new not either understanding or needing to be brought into the fold of what it is we're doing, we'll have to we'll run into that as we go through. So I'm sure we'll hit it. I guess I have. I noticed a couple of other places. One would you could look at it under agenda planning, um, where uh, let's see, I think it's four or five. Where it says the uh, board delegates to the chair the authority to fill the authority to fill out the details of the meeting content. So that's not exactly relevant to this, but if it's an issue that comes up, it's it's kind of the the chair has the you know ability to put that in the agenda or or not put that in the agenda. Yes. Yeah. But I, I I took that one in, in question three later as what oh, okay. what action if any. So yeah. I kind of took it up. Mm -hmm. Later point from a different perspective, but and the last one that I found was uh, four point seven. The last item is four point seven, which is six. That no matter what the outcome of this is. So four point seven, it speaks to it. Four point seven. Six, it's all the way at the end. Members will support the legitimacy and authority of the final determination of the board on any matter, oh, irrespective okay. of the member's personal position on the issue. So, yeah, that definitely, definitely, it's a, it's page ten. Page ten. Yeah, it is on page ten. It's, the Here's fourth right and fifth line. Okay. Now. Here's about 11. Because I know that the piece is an old printout. Awesome. All right. So, according to these policies, um, does this scenario refer to anything that is delegated to the CEO, CEO or the superintendent? Yeah. I think everything. The yes, reasonable interpretation, it has been delegated once the policies are laid out. Uh, it's still your, I mean, it's your decision as to whether it's the board's decision. It is the superintendent's needs to do the interpretation. The board right. has to accept it. Right. Um, I guess I, I made the assumption here that because it says all policies, I, I'm not sure if, if it was just they had, you know, this person had an issue with one one particular one or, you know, everything. Yes, but policies. I, just it, the ends. I think uh, 
and I'm looking at the answer sheet. <laughs> See, it says that the board, not the CEO, is responsible for writing the ENDS policies. Okay. So this scenario is not referring to anything right. that has been delegated to the CEO. Because we're well, I think the person has right. a yes. problem with the policy yes. that is not not the interpretation. Not right. the interpretation. Uh -huh. She's just concerned about, or this person is okay. concerned right. about She's possible interpretation. Yeah. As okay. written, they're not sufficiently defined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so that's yeah I think that's that not willing not. to accept the full range of reasonable interpretations. Okay. So it really does fall on the board. Right. Right. Um, and if it does. So, yeah. Actually, they say unsure. It says, quote, if the board member has presented her concerns to the board, the action was consistent with the board's policy. So she's she's done what she's done is consistent. It's whether how she should. I think the next item is. Um, what do you do about it? What do you do about it? What what? So what should this person do if they want to? They want to present this as an issue of concern. Besides just saying I don't. I think it's too right, exactly. broad. Would that be the, right. the agenda planning, like bring it up on the agenda yeah. to right. have a discussion? Yeah. yeah. Right. And, then and, this and what information would, would you be expecting from this person? <laughs> so that person would bring information? If you're going to put something on the agenda, you need to, to have some I stuff would, to back I would that. If you have a complaint about or you have concern about yeah. policy. So probably uh, specific re, you know, places where it's been unreasonable. Or that how how do you, how can or it you, may be unreasonable. May be yeah. unreasonable. You would like bring a know. policy. You would bring a, an attempted policy change or request right. a policy that, change. That's that's what I was thinking. Is yeah. that you would and bring then, forward and then some. Obviously, you would if it does pass the reasonable interpretation test. You would accept that as it is, but then you would change the policy to say, okay, in the future we're narrowing this to say X Y Z or whatever. And I guess I'm not sure where you guys have been over the last few years, though, uh, Ange, but I would suspect that the first um, the first blush when you get something that bumps into one of your, uh, you know, one of your tests here is to change the policy to, to fit the situation rather than allowing the interpretation of the situation to fit into the policy, because I would I would hate to see us try to change the policy every time something came up, rather than letting it stand <coughs> relatively generically and, and get the interpretations yeah. to try to work through it. Have you run into that where you've had a lot of? I don't, I don't think we've ever run into a situation where we haven't liked the interpretation, and didn't feel it was reasonable. Um, I think we've run into situations where um, the superintendent wasn't. didn't meet the policy and maybe the, the policy was unreasonable itself was unreasonable the reasons for him not not um, the roof being bad no money in a budget right, to fix that, that, that yeah. kind of a facility um, or you know maybe it was a timing thing you know which we said we, we want this done in August like the budget has to be done in August for instance totally unreasonable because they you know they don't have any information so I mean you could, you could, we've had those kind of things where there's just some kind of constriction that just doesn't make sense, so we change it. Um, other than that, I can't think of any really big things. The okay. question I have with this, and the biggest thing with ENDS especially, is evaluation and measurement. Um, yes, because no, everything in the interpretation and in the ENDS themselves, really, is all about information. It's all about data. And if the board says, for instance, something crazy, you know, we want to see, um, you know, students proficient in numeracy. And we're, how specific do we get in the ends about what we want for a measurement? Um, you know, if everybody's assuming on the board that it's going to be a quantitative measurement of some type of test score and superintendent brings back a qualitative measurement, which is something totally different, the interpretation could still be there, but do you ever run into that where the information isn't exactly what you're looking for and what do you do? Well, you can say that um, although it's a reasonable interpretation, 
the evidence isn't there to show that there's competency in numeracy, if that's what we're talking about. Um, so you can say that he's, he's not, the superintendent's not in compliance. Um, and you can say that his indicators, whatever they are, don't sufficiently give you what you need to know. I think you could deal with it that way. But you allow, or, you know, or if, do you if, allow the evaluative process or the information that's all collected by the CEO? They choose how they're going to show it. And I mean, is it a crapshoot for them, if you will, um, of saying, okay, you know, I have this data and I believe it's okay, and they put a lot of work into it, and the board says, hmm, that's really not what we were looking for as a measurement. Mm -hmm. Or is there communication involved here through policy? Yeah, I mean, I, especially at the beginning, I would imagine you'd have communication with, um, you know, the, 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 the superintendent could, you know, give a draft copy of thing, something to people and say, is this, or the whole board and say, this is the direction I'm thinking I'm going uh, I'm going with this. Does that, you know, before I go off on some tangent, is this is this look like something you want? Um, I don't think there's any reason not to do that. I mean, it's it's not a really ad adverse you know, adversarial kind of situation. You can, you know, you can do that kind of communication. Okay. At least, at least we do. I mean, I don't know what Mr. Carver and this and Ms. Carver say, but it seems reasonable to me. I mean, the other thing is it, that wouldn't be your only. Um, the superintendent's report on ends wouldn't be the only thing you do. There's other, um, what is that called? Indirect monitoring. There's also direct mm -hmm. monitoring mm -hmm. where you know you go to um, a school play or you go to the science fair. Um, actually, in, I mean not as a as a whole board going around and doing this, but as a you know casual thing, go around, you know, talk to some of the kids about their projects at the science fair, ask them some questions that you know, that aren't written on this little placard that they have, you know, see, just to try to get some, a feel for, not an individual kid, but the kids in, in general, you know. Uh -huh. So there's that kind of direct inspection. And we have a little, we have a little spreadsheet, kind of spreadsheet, you know, a form that whenever somebody does something like that, they'll fill it out and it'll, essentially it's our, it's the, you know, the four ends and, and what you saw at that presentation or whatever that refer, reflected any of those ends, whether it was mm -hmm. adaptability or communication mm -hmm. or knowledge or whatever it was, technology, that kind of thing. So, and, and we collect those and when, it, um, so that's also part of the ends evaluation. Okay. Um, and the other thing was bringing in people from the outside. From outside, yeah. you know, so. Um, so Would they use the same form? You know, would they do the same form of taking notes or just what their impression is if they know what we're looking for, what we want our students to oh, be getting? Oh, no, we, I was thinking more about bringing somebody to a board meeting like somebody or going to the Chamber of Commerce and talking to them about, uh, you know, employing students that graduate from our high school and getting some feedback that way. Oh, okay. That kind of stuff. Um, but you could have, I mean, we've talked about having you know non board members when they go to the science sphere fill out this little thing about yeah. just get some feedback um, you can do that we we haven't done that yet that's you know, interesting <laughs> yeah because i think it just keeps at the forefront of what do, what do we want from our students you right. know what are we looking to build and yeah and it, well, it gets you away from you know the kneecap test well and, and <laughs> with well the truth is though as far as measurement is concerned the kneecap test or any type of testing is kind of easy. When you start getting into the effective and right. psychomotor outcomes, that's something a little bit different to try to measure, mm -hmm. to try to put something solid together that you can present to the board and say, this is what we did and it's working or no, it's not or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's one well, thing to say, some of the Johnny can do two plus two, but it's quite something else to say, this is what's happening socially and, and right. emotionally. Right. It's, it's a little bit different right. of a thing to measure. When you get into character kind mm -hmm. of issues, adaptability or, or right. tenacity or whatever, you know. You persistence and grit. Persistence. Grace. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you got a four in persistence. Right back up. <laughs> so it's, yeah. 
Okay. I'm like, cool. The, um, I think, depending on what this, this person wanted to do, for instance, if they said, I think it's too broad, uh, they could come with examples of say, look, I think a reasonable interpreter, right, you know, this, I could reasonably interpret this as, you know, I fire all the teachers and I, you know, I bring in whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, well, I can't think of a, a good scenario, but it could be something that, um, if it's broad enough that fits, re that is reasonable and they could show that they are unreasonable, but, or are reasonable things that you wouldn't want, I guess is what I'm saying. So if that person, if the board member could show that, then maybe that would be another thing to mm -hmm. uh, present, there's something to present. So given that, um, I guess item f uh, four is if the action you propose involves a possible, uh, possible board policy change. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do from there? And I guess you know we've kind of talked about that. You can right. you can try to to revise whatever portion of the ends to to be more narrow in that in that. Uh, like Jay was saying that you know if you wanted to, uh, you're looking at numeracy. And uh, they were giving you one kind of information, and you really wanted, wanted to go, wanted, thought it was the best in another direction. Like um, you could change your, you could, you could uh, be more restrictive in your policy to point in that direction. Um, so you know, there's that kind of thing. The other thing is the board could listen to this and say they don't agree. And move on. One one vote among many and yeah, not right. along with the yeah. course of the rest and that board member then falls in line with the the board right not the individual yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Right. Um, is there a common form that you use for it like monitoring reports they're presented is there a form you use or a process right after that to give feedback to the superintendent about um, whether the um, information was adequate whether Yes. I know at Mount Abe we use that, but I don't know if it's something common in all ends policy uh, uh, boards. Yeah, I don't know if it's common or not. But we have, it's like we have a big board, it's 14 people, so everybody doesn't go into this. You go to the superintendent and review in detail what the what the, his minor report is. Um, he'll he'll hand out a report at the meeting that's you know a few pages. It's like an executive summary with the different items from the. In that policy, but there's a lot of backup to it. You know, if it's if it's uh, protection of assets, he's you know he'll have insurance policies and, and you know list of assets and all this other kind of stuff that that uh, he has as backup. We, he doesn't send that to the entire board. We appoint a couple of board members on each each report to go in and meet with him and see all the information. And then they fill out a template that is essentially the the bullet items in your in in whatever policy it is, you might have four or five, um, and then they check off. You know, is it is it a reasonable interpretation? Is the evidence there? Uh, and is it um, is it accepted? And if it's not accepted, what's missing or what? Mm -hmm. So there's there's that kind of summary. They bring it back to the board the next and discuss it. And so there is that kind of policy, and we can I can give you copies of that. Okay. Great. Anything, Any other uh, questions? Anything else? <clears throat> well, I think we've uh, been through six to eight months getting into a position to get policy governance moving. Uh, <clears throat> and listening to Ange over the last three or four months, the process doesn't ever stop. <laughs> Uh, we will at times feel like we're floundering I'm sure but I firmly believe that we're moving in the right direction as I believe we we all do um, so I look forward as we move over the next couple of months you'll see April's agenda will be the first and I'm assuming we'll have a, an annual outline at that point so we'll get started in understanding expectations and doing board work at that point, so I think you know my experience was that you know it, 
for the first year or two, you're, you're really dealing with, you know, knowing what the policies are and trying to, just a lot of policy governance-ish kind of technical kind of stuff that you deal with and you end up after a year or two you're saying, God, you know what, we gotta move on. <laughs> I'm tired of this kind of reviewing. Because you do, you end up, you know, you've got, uh, oh, I don't know, what, eight, eight executive limitations plus the ends. So, you know, every meeting you're gonna be reviewing one of these, one of these things. Um, as they, as the, once you get going, but I think what you have to re, what, at that point you have to say, okay, we've got you know we've got this base down. We need to move on. We have to really look at at uh, evaluating ends. We have to really look at communicating with the community, mm -hmm. and so it, you know you, get, you you step beyond that that kind of minutia that you, you deal with. But you know it, it's going to bog down I think for a while. So just so. Let me warn you that that and I think our biggest work item as we move in the near to midterm is going to be getting the ends defined right. clearly and that'll be your big work yeah so I'll have to uh, and I think that'll be a lot of a lot of work but community focused facing uh, activities yeah. what do we want to see from a, as a community coming out of the school well, that can be a lot of fun that's I, mean, I found that to be really enjoyable wordsmithing ends mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I'm sure that'll I'm sure that'll be uh, easy to get on paper tough to finalize a document <laughs> okay and thank you very much thank for you. making thank the you trip again yeah. drive uh, we'll see you on the first <clears throat> all right drive safely thank we, you we need we need you back <clears throat> <laughs> Have a good meeting. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, on into uh, <clears throat> new business. Uh, sorry. <coughs> into new business, use of facilities, amateur musicians, orchestra. Um, any, uh, I would accept a motion to approve the use of facilities for amateur musicians orchestra so moved second second any other discussion any all those in favor aye aye opposed okay and then last item before uh, future agenda items the transportation study grant i read this one with some interest mm -hmm. you want to this is uh, this is just a request. Uh, Wynn Goodrich, who is the assistant superintendent in South Burlington, as part of his dissertation, he's just looking at the county uh, transportation study and um, basically what he's trying to do is optimize the school bus routes within the county, so across the nine districts. Um, looking at cost efficiencies and cleaner um, fuel instead of using diesel Metric. buses yeah so all he, so he's applying for a grant all he's asking is um, that school districts participate in it so he can really see like for us we have we contract with mountain transit and they do the transportation for our students who have disabilities that need that as a related service they do the preschool runs, and then for kids who may have some sort of medical issue that can't walk but need to ride the bus, they're on there. Mm -hmm. And we have, currently, we've got two runs in the morning and two in the afternoon. So I think what he's really trying to look at is how many buses are each district using, what are you spending, and is there a better way to use one fleet for all nine schools and figure something out. So it's, I think again, it, right. And, and it kind of fits into some of the things that people have talked about, just even in looking at the uh, consolidation study, how can we do some of that cost sharing? I mean, we're, not spending as much as some other districts in transportation but we still spend some money for um, the bus runs that we provide so all he's asking is just for the board um, to agree to participate in this and there is no financial obligation and basically he's hoping that 
we'll get some good information from his study. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I would turn my only question that I had with this is back to you guys and whether you believe that the information that's going to be sought is something that can be gathered up relatively quickly rather than taking... Yeah. Are you willing to invest the time to help mm -hmm. them out, I guess is, is yeah. my question. It, it, yeah, it Cheering was just that. a listing of the streets pretty okay. much that we're serving right now. Okay. So most of the schools are, are agreeing to participate because they really see it as something that would be nice if we can coordinate that resource and make it mm -hmm. more efficient. And then I think, too, as we're moving forward with thinking around multiple pathways and dual enrollment, there mm -hmm. may be something that a bus could do a loop and pick up all the kids that maybe are, are going to UVM for a course or going to CCV instead of Winooski sending transportation, wow. Colchester. Right. It might just be one that does a sweep. Yep. Okay. All right. So I would uh, accept the motion to allow participation in Win Goodrich's transportation study, as noted. So moved. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Great. Sounds like we uh, we'll get a good deep dive into yeah. that one. Uh, future agenda items. At this point, I would say that I'm going to hold on future agenda items. We're meeting on April 1st uh, to try to sit with Ange and Val and Mary and I to lay out what would look like for the year and I'm assuming and how we would lay one out for April. All of so, us are just no just just myself okay. and we'll get it we'll get it laid <laughs> out and we'll get it lined okay. up and see what it looks like Excellent. and see how it flows as we get into April. So the parking lot safety update that was supposed to be on the agenda this month. Ah yes. I included that well some information in my board report and basically we're just kind of at a holding point until we you know get the parking lot paved and get some signage up. I th we feel once we get the signage and the lines in there, the traffic will flow better. I mean, short of hiring someone to be out there policing it, I'm not sure what other step to take at this point. But has, I it been, has it been, um, you know, thought about, you know, we have it all, we have a design. We had a design mm -hmm. last year when we right. brought it forward. Right. So that'll be the same design that we're looking yeah. to get bid on this year. I guess I was thinking about a, um, I guess I would think of it as a, a greeter in the parking lot instead of a police, you know, just being able to remind things. I know that would, in the mornings, there's just those two areas. I'm not sure if that's been um, Well, I think we could certainly do that. But we don't have a resource currently in-house that we could commit out there every right. morning. So it would have to be an additional my, position. My concern is from a safety perspective. In the morning, if we had to get emergency vehicles in there, we couldn't. Mm -hmm. There's, the there's off. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get here in the afternoon. I mentioned the, the morning only because that's a wit from a witness uh, perspective. Not good. The afternoon, the afternoon but is scary. If, and, and if you're going to have an issue, Murphy says that's when you're going to have it. I think we need to do something to clean that up. That was that that initial. That is a a, a bus, an emergency vehicle uh, access route, and I think it's mm -hmm. a safety issue well, we could having it look plugged at up getting someone like a crossing guard type <clears throat> position you know and come up with a job description when we lock it and give there. the school bus drivers a key or whatever well, i don't i don't well, i'm Mary, not going to try to solve it you've, here yeah. you've said that I people just that. take the chain down so I, I, seen that. I don't want to try to solve it here because it's yeah. way beyond yeah. what we want to try to do but, but i think that whatever think you know ha having someone out there is that it's also about a, you know welcoming face as well you know and it not being so adversarial even mm -hmm. though it is about safety but i think we've got to Make sure we're being thoughtful about it too. One of the things that I've started to look into is. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go back since we're in policy governance. I'm just going to go back and say this is all a means, mm -hmm. and I think if if it's not dealt with in a reasonable amount of time, it's a policy violation. So what's a reasonable amount of time? The project's out. I don't know, but we we <laughs> have a, we have a safety concern, and I think it's legitimate, mm -hmm. and policies are pretty clear on that so we if we're in policy governance as of this month I mean we just relegated all of our policies mm -hmm. away so it's really not the board's place yeah. to, to really discuss how it's going to get fixed but mm -hmm. superintendent congratulations fix it 
So yeah, I think it's, it's her job to figure out how this is to be done, but it needs, we have a situation and it needs to be fixed. That's all. Right, I, I guess I, I agree. Somehow, it, again, emergency vehicles, it, it's a safety, it's a safety item. Uh, the other one that we had talked about was Hawthorne uh, Field. Is that locked up now? That, it is locked up. Okay. Car, we had a car towed and it's locked up. Yeah, I, well, we have that discussion coming, but I, I just wanted to make sure that I hadn't been by there in a couple of, in a week or better. Okay, um, so I am going to, at this point, uh, accept a motion to move into, um, we have touched everything here, yes? No, correspondence, I think. Oh, correspondence. Um, I, Do we have anything? We didn't have anything. I got this tonight, but I didn't oh. get anything special. This is just from Karen Green. I think we'll talk about this in the April meeting, or is this? You it's can, basically the board has a scholarship, so they're going to be looking for it again. There's money in the budget for it. We do it every year. I mean, you can certainly act on it. I mean, I think you can act on it tonight. I'm not <clears> sure if that's – it's not usually a very controversial issue. Yeah. Unless you want the letter stamped and on the agenda – as an agenda item, then we can do it for it's April. very basic. We do it every year. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Is I, it, I think let's just do it tonight. Keep it out of, keep it out of April. I'm, right, I move that we do our standard scholarship that we do every year. Continue. I'll second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Makes that easier. Thank you very much. That's, uh, somebody will appreciate it and buy a book with it. <laughs> or ben, half. Ben Maybe even done. two. Ben, they're done. I may need a loan for the other half, but yeah. I would accept a motion to uh, move <laughs> into executive session. So moved. Oops. Go ahead. No, Tori got it. Other, I'll uh, second. Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Opposed? We are in executive session. We will yeah. take a break for at least five minutes until Mr. DeMott gets here.